Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I want to show you this. This is Roland's System 8 plug-out synthesizer. A plug-out, what's that? Well, plug-in lives on your computer, inside of your computer. Plug-out lives outside of your computer, in, in this box. Roland, they're making an attempt of recreating many of their flagship older synthesizers uh, for you to download and put into this synth here. But I'm not going to show you that today. What I want to show you is the system its own sound architecture and sound engine and how to make new system eight sounds with this synthesizers. And I think it could be a little bit daunting at first because there's so much stuff on here. So uh, as a beginner, it's really difficult to know how to begin and where to start. But once you, you get the hang of it, you, you come to terms with it being really fast. So you can, everything is uh, like um, just a knob away. There's no menu diving. You can just access the whole synth engine right here. And yeah, I want to show you how to, to make a few sounds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so here we go. Let's just turn it on. And first of all, I just need to comment on something that I'm sure everyone is seeing right now. What is this? <laughs> What's this? It's my face in here. Why, why, why is it, you know, peeking in like this? Well, I, I had the opportunity to, uh, to make a custom print and I, I designed uh, like 15 or maybe 20 different really cool whole cover illustrations. In the end, I felt like, you know, I just want to highlight a few things and I, I stripped away all the illustrations, but then I felt like, you know, this is my custom illustration, so I'm gonna just peek in here. It might be a bit narcissistic, but yeah, there it is. I, I think it's kind of fun. Anyhow, what I wanted to show with my custom uh, custom uh, print was I want to highlight some various things that I thought was really interesting. First of all, System 8. This is what I'm gonna focus on, System 8. Uh, it's its own synthesizer engine, and uh, uh, that's what I'm mostly curious about. So System 8 is highlighted. What else? Variation, variation, variation. Uh, and there is a little display here. So every, every place where you can make different variations will dramatically change the sound of the synth, which I think is really, really worth highlighting, making a, a real highlight out of it. So splash right there. Here is a variation too on the filter. There's a bunch of different filters you can choose from here. So variations on the filters. Uh, and then there's the tone. This is like a master effect with, with some nasty drive and stuff. And yeah, I wanted to highlight that too. But there is one little thing. There's a tone here too. And I kind of forgot when I had my first kind of moments with it, uh, I, didn't, I didn't quite realize how powerful this is. So let's highlight this too. Let's swap it out with this one. So tone, yeah, tone is also highlighted now. So with this in mind, I'm just gonna start going through the different possibilities of making sounds. Okay, so when you first get a synthesizer like this, first thing you do, at least what I do, is to try out the factory presets. So bank A, uh, preset one, two, three, four, five. I'm not. I, I'm not that familiar with Roland, but I have a feeling that these sounds are. Kind of, kind of Roland-ish, aren't they? Maybe, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but in my taste, I, I always tend to go for sounds that kind of climb out of the box and kind of have this appearance and this presence. And I think a lot of the factory presets, they are kind of background presets, which is nice, but, but I want these, you know, presence, this crispy presence in the sound. And so I've started, I want to fill this whole synth up with my own sounds. 
uh, eventually I will that and when it's full I'm going to offer that as a, a pack for everyone that's interested I'm going to put it up on my web store also 16 of these sounds is going to be available for free uh, at Roland at a later date or maybe when you by the time you're watching this I'm not sure <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a splash in the description below with a link to the free sounds and to the whole pack once it becomes available. I'm going to announce it in a separate video as well. Let's make sounds. So um, I've filled up from about D, back D and forward. Uh, I've uh, made my own sounds. So right now just trying out some sounds to get a feel for it. There's a, spe a special filter in there that you can kind of harass to, to make sound like synth. Um, like that. sounds like this you can make all sorts of sounds and the engine is is not overly complicated I say so let's get to it and start uh, by clearing out a patch and making a, a, a patch from scratch okay um, whenever I want I can press shift and patch that will clear the current uh, memory uh, that is currently loaded into the synth and start with a blank patch it will not save this so just by doing that you will not overwrite anything that's saved so I'm just gonna do a shift and patch and on the screen here you can see it says patch initialize enter is kind of the yes button here exit is the no button so I'm gonna enter it's completed uh, um, it sounds like this Let's check out the different waveforms. Oscillator 1, 2 and 3. These are the sections that generate sounds. This is the mixer. And right now oscillator 1 is active. How can I know? Uh, well, let's check out the mixer. Let's turn this knob. Oscillator 1. When we turn it to 0, there is no sound. Let's try oscillator 2. Sounds exactly the same. Oscillator 3. Sounds very different. Oscillator 3 is typically used as a sub 
bass uh, little helping oscillator to help beefen up the sound. For instance, oscillator four, it's not really oscillator four, it's the noise. There are two noises, pink and white. White is sharp. Okay, let's uh, bring back oscillator one again and check out the different waveforms that. So the top knob here uh, is actually called uh, color. So the different colors of, of this uh, oscillator, of this variation, I'm, I'm gonna mess these <laughs> terms up, these okay, variation one, we can see on the screen here as well. Uh, on the screen it says wave, yeah, oscillator one. <laughs> it's a uh, soul. Every oscillator and every waveform has um, is tied to this modulation wheel knob uh, thing. So if, if we're on here and we turn this, we modulate the oscillator according to a certain... Uh, every, every sound has its own way of being modulated. Take the next one, it's a square wave. And if you're used to this kind of stuff of synthesizers, you can hear that this is pulse width modulation. I noticed with this, this flavor of square, square wave is very different from a lot of other square waves. Like typically you have this hollow sound where the square wave is absolutely symmetrical. Uh, but in this one, you, you don't really have that hollow sound. There's a lot more overtones. You can hear this, this kind of a sizzle in there. Uh, so it's a little bit more overtones than what I'm used to. And then we start fiddling around with the uh, with the uh, modulation. Let's try the next one. It's the triangle. time when I'm playing now it's just on and off right it's because the amp is at the default state and I think the default state is immediate attack perhaps it's uh, eternal decay I'm not sure and the sustain is set to be at the maximum value the key off is there is no release time it sounds like this now. If I were to change this a little bit. Slow attack. How about slow release? How about quick attack, slow release? Yeah, so this is shaping it's an envelope, it's shaping the volume over time on, on the sound. If I lower the sustain, sustain means uh, this is the, the amplitude that is sustained while you're keeping the note pressed. Until you release it, then you hit the release time. Right now the decay is awfully long, so I'm gonna make a shorter decay time. Right now, you might be thinking, yeah, it's not too bad. Actually, it's a nice little sound. But it's a little bit low. Okay, let's mix it up a bit. Okay, yeah. And uh, there is another way to 
raise the volume if you if you raise the volume here at the level you're going to raise the everything that you've created and then raise it okay so then the sound travels into the effect the delay the chorus the reverb let's listen to the reverb here i think this could be a really nice kind of uh, um 8-bit adventure game with a reverb. Let's try the reverb. I'm just gonna raise the reverb here and see what it sounds like in the default state. I'm gonna make a really short release time of the sound here just to illustrate. Uh, that way you can really hear the quality of the reverb. I do this a lot of times when I just want to kind of fine tune the, the, the reverb and make the sound really short and then work with the reverb and then I go back with the release time I had in mind. So let's uh, fine tune the reverb. We've got a bunch of different types and then yeah it says here too if you if, if you don't want to lean over <laughs> it says here and basically it's the type the length, the time, and how much you send to the reverb. The first one is called ambience. It's a bit special, it sounds like a kind of boxy concrete room or something. Let's try the next one called room. Yeah, that sounds a bit more room-like, uh, maybe not as boxy as the other one. I think having a really short room reverb really helps create an illusion of the sound being played uh, in a real place, in a room, rather than just being a very dry sound. Like this, for instance. So reverb is a really good tool, tool to uh, kind of blend it into uh, the real world, so to say. Okay, let's try the whole. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. Let's try the whole two. Whole one. Whole two. Yeah, kind of different flavor, it kind of muffles a bit differently over time. The next one is um, plate. Yeah, these are nice reverbs. They they have a musical, pleasant feel to it. See, the last one is called modulation. It's modulating the, the pitch over time, so it has a sort of um, chorus effect or something. 
<clears throat> yeah, yeah, these are nice. Cool. Let's use the room for now. Okay, we, we know this sound now. Let's, um, yeah, continue with this. So we were at the, the triangle. So the next one is a saw, two. This is a saw, just one saw. This is called saw, two. So that, I think it's like two or maybe even three uh, saw waves that are being offset slightly. So um, a little phasing issues with the sounds. <laughs> You have this kind of animated feel to it. And now, when we change this, uh, the modulation of this. This, sorry about that particular riff. It's just the first thing that came in mind. I think this is referred to as a super saw, I guess, maybe, I'm not sure. So basically the two or, th is it three or two? I mean, it says two here, so it should be two. Kind of sounds like three. Uh, what it's doing is that it's detuning de the different iterations of the waveform. So it, when it's detuned, it's, they have different frequencies and uh, yeah, is, is the outcome of that. So more and more uh, detuning uh, becomes bigger and bigger uh, sound. <laughs> cool, so the, other th the others are the same. This one could be really nice with an eerie reverb. This is a super simple sound, but just by making the right calls, uh, you can bring it to a place where it, it makes sense. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, we haven't come far, we've got a lot of stuff to do. Let's try the variation now. What's this? I'm gonna just dial back the reverb so we have a clean sound again. Ooh, look at this. I'm gonna reset this. So this one, let's see what it's called. It's called is it's called noise saw. I like this stuff. This is very noisy and interesting. Let's try the next one. It's called logic. Down, down the level a bit, maybe here as well. This is nice. This has a really peculiar kind of uh, digitally noisy feel to it. Okay, next one is called Way, uh, FM. Let's, in fact, let's use this and let's try to animate this somehow. 
I'm going to use the LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. This is giving off a value at a low frequency, and that value could be used in different aspects of the synth. So for instance, in order to modulate this uh, with the oscillator, we need to use this knob here. Uh, the default state is set to manual. It's not man, it's manual. So let's set it to LFO instead. Let's set this to really slow. The, this section here has a rate. I'm going to lower the rate. And you can see this flashing. It's already indicating a much lower rate. With a nice reverb, we go here. And so, one thing that we need to clarify, and it took me a little bit by surprise, is that the different shapes here on the LFO does not transfer over to the modulation. Uh, the different shapes here, if you're using these uh, for modulating, you can modulate the pitch, you can modulate the filter, but we need to set it up, you can modulate the, the amp, volume. Uh, these uh, respect the different waveforms. But this one, when it's using the, the LFO, it's just using the ge general value of the LFO. So if we're changing this to random, for instance, and we're raising the value here, it's still just linear, right? So that took me by surprise. So I'm happy I kind of noticed. And so now we know that. However, if I reset this to uh, manual again, and I, I listen to the random uh, LFO on this instead, on the amp. It's a random value that is kind of changing organically over time. This is another va uh, random value, but it's doing it in steps. Or uh, square. So. And this is interesting too, when uh, these knobs are set to an upright position, uh, they kind of snap into this position. Uh, there is no modulation going on. If I turn it to the right, it's a positive change. If I turn it to the left, it's a negative change. So adding or subtracting. So this particular one, now we're on the so uh, uh, LFO. If I turn it to negative, it's sort of like a bouncing ball. But if I turn it positive, it kind of uh, raises the volume instead. Yeah. But one thing we notice now, we, we never quite know where, where in the waveform the modulation starts. If it's on this, for instance, It seems to like it's random. Uh, we don't know where where in this uh, waveform uh, it actually starts when we press the key. If we press the key trig button, it's always going to start from the beginning of the waveform, and that means that we can predict. Uh, if if I do this now, it sounds as it's going at the same time. If I do like this. Uh, since I pressed the different keys at different time, it has this, yeah, we can predict when the LFO, how the LFO behaves.
this is nice. I want to also show you this. It's called fade time. When fade time, I think it's zero as a default value. That means that the LFO starts to have its effect straight away. Fade time is, however, a way to delay the effect and gradually increasing the effect of the LFO. Reverb, we need the reverb again. This is eerie. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So how about the filter? I'm gonna reset the the amp there and modulate the filter. We can't really hear it. Why is that? Well, I'm gonna reset this again. It's because the filter. We don't really know where the filter is set, and whether this will have a an audible effect is difficult to predict uh, unless we know where we've set the filter. So let's try out the filter for now. We've got variation number one on the filter now. Let's turn the let's turn the cutoff knob. If we the cutoff and the resonance they work together. The cutoff is, uh, well, in this case, we're on variation number one. We have this, uh, the different filters that are labeled here. It's low pass filters and it's high pass filters. The low pass filters is preserving the lows and it's cutting away from the top until it kind of shaves off all of the frequencies from the top. The high pass filter is preserving the highs and is cutting the frequencies from the bottom and up until it's shaving off all of the frequencies. So but all it does is kind of muffling the sound right now. We're gonna try the, the resonance as well to kind of have a, a feel for what the resonance does to it. So the resonance is, as it's shaving off, it's creating a super, a peak at the shaving point, at the cutoff point, the cutoff frequency. Right now, we have an extreme resonance. We can hear a pitch, a certain pitch. It's the same frequency regardless of where on the keyboard we, we play. But if we increase the key factor here, we're gonna make this follow the keyboard. If the key, uh, if the key f uh, factor is uh, maximum, then it's gonna follow the keyboard uh, one to one. So if we find the frequency now, let's say, Dun, dun, dun. And you get this sort of feel for where this could be useful. And right now we're kind of just exploring. The sound was um, already very kind of soft, but if we increase more harmonics in the sound, let's do that. Let's 
fade in oscillator two at this point. And let's retune this. In any case, now we have a filter that we know where it's set and we can clearly hear when it's changing. Now, let's change the, the filter over here on the LFO. Okay, so now we've got control over the filter, let's increase the noise and see what it sounds like through the filter in this state. At the same time when this filter is going on, we also got a filter down here, which is a high pass filter, which means we can shave off the bottom a little bit. Trim the low frequencies. With a nice reverb, maybe a room reverb. Now, in order to make a, a sound really playable as a keyboard player, I think it's natural to expect some sort of velocity sensitivity. So when I press it harder, uh, we have a, a more expressive sound. There's uh, two ways here that's very simple to use. We could use this one to just change the volume, the overall volume of the sound. If it's maximum, it's a bit too dramatic. It's it's a bit difficult to. Yeah, but use this subtly, and you can have a slight very um, expression there. Uh, and there is a ver velocity sensitivity here as well. So the filter is basically gonna increase the cutoff when I strike harder and decrease the cutoff uh, frequency when I play at the softer levels. So if I turn it up quite high and reduce the cutoff, maybe too high. Mm-hmm, could be something. Cool, okay. Um, yeah, let's uh, kind of restart a bit. I'm gonna open up the filter again and dial down that second oscillator. Take away the noise. And then keep exploring it. We just came to variation number two here. Wow, there's vowels. If we want like a Yeah, we could use a modulation there too. Let's use another modulation. Now we use the LFO's modulation cells. Let's use this one. This is a pitch um, envelope but it could also be used for uh, modulation. Yeah, so if I turn this up, nothing happens. Nothing happens. If I turn this up, however, and use this knob, we 
can hear that this is modulating the pitch, but if this is set to zero, it's not modulating anything. We can still use it, however. So if we go here and set this straight up to P envelope, it's gonna use this pitch envelope to the extent that I set this. And it's fun. Cool. Um, one thing that I noticed now is this, this, this sound is a little bit sharp. I'm going to turn off the reverb for now. So there, there's a number of ways of tackling this if you want to kind of uh, use the filter slightly. Um, But there is also another one. You remember this? I set this, uh, I, set, I made it pink. Uh, let's use it now, see what happens. So the default value is straight up. By just lowering this, this is sort of like an EQ. It's kind of um, boosting the low frequencies a little bit and making it warmer and fuller at the low end. When I do the opposite, it's gonna uh, kind of raise the high frequencies. Yeah, so let's bring it down a bit, see if it helps us with this kind of sharp, um, deal with this sharp sound. Kind of tackling it. I think it sounds good down here, but as I move up here, it becomes a little bit like ah, uh, it's it's you know I wish it was a bit softer up here. Let's try to deal with that. Um, the filter can follow the keyboard, but it could also move in the opposite way of the keyboard. So plus means it's following the keyboard. Minus means that it's gonna move the other way of the keyboard. So let's see what happens when we m set it to a minus value. Now, when we cross a certain point, it's starting to kind of, um, yeah, lower the cut of frequencies because we we made the key um, parameter negative. Yeah, it, it could be a bit annoying. This sound. <laughs> Let's try another sound. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna reset this. Let's try this, cowbell. Yeah, it's a traditional um, Roland cowbell. <laughs> okay, three. FM. 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 It's nice. So different flavors of FM. Ooh, high frequency. Nice. So number four, FM. Yeah, that's FM too. Nice. You know, I have an idea now. Let's use uh, both of them in different FM modes and see if we could uh, use different uh, different uh, modulation sources on them and shape a, an interesting sound. So Okay, I'm gonna use the pitch envelope here slow attack slow decay 
page envelope. Okay, I'm going to lower that and bring up oscillator 2. And let's see, go to uh, another FM engine. How about this one? I'm going to use the filter envelope for this one. Let's see, short attack, short decay, sustain, release. And let's see, uh, filter envelope. Let's bring them both up. They're heavily detuned. What do I do? Let's see. There we go. Fine tuning. I think to my ears they are so separate so they kind of don't belong together. Let's see if we can change the this one, uh, oscillator one to a different different one. How about this one? I think it fits better. One thing uh, that I noticed too is a limitation is that the velocity sensitivities of the filter envelope and the amp envelope is not transferring over to the modulation, at least not now. I guess Roland, if you're watching this, maybe that could be a nice addition in a future update. Uh, so the modulation right now is just going to be the same amount of modulation every time, at least from what I've understood. But that doesn't stop us from, from using the velocity sensitivity on the filter to kind of uh, introduce some... time of the patch was zero. The release time of the filter envelope was also zero. So even though uh, the release time of the of the amp envelope even though that is set to long, it doesn't mean that the filter envelope, which is now being used as a modulation source for, for this sound, for this uh, modulation here. With a nice reverb. Actually, let's check this out. Delay. Thank you. 
is the stuff that makes me excited. Uh, FM sounds is something that I really care about. So I think the, the FM implementation here is nice. It sounds nice. Yeah, so what if we wanted to save this sound? Uh, let's do that. I'm gonna press right. So now we started to the procedure of saving the sound. It says enter, uh, patch. Yeah, we want to save a patch. Yes enter patch name yes we want to give it a name we don't want it to be called dash so there is a way to uh, delete uh, the set the name here by pressing shift and back it's kind of backspace or a delete page and now we can use this to type a name here let's call, call it um megan yeah uh, with an alternative spelling and uh, it's it's a capital E there if I want a, a small E I'm gonna press shift and turn this to the left it's like a shortcut and then press right Meg and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna spell it like this because I'm a fan of the Mega Drive a Sega Mega Drive called Sega Genesis in the United States and Mega Drive elsewhere so we're going to call this Megan because it's kind of reminding me a little bit about Mega Drive. So Megan, okay, yes, enter. And now it's asking me, do you want to, sh to save it in this place? No, I don't. I want to save it somewhere else. And I could preview the sound so that I know I'm not overwriting something that I want. Okay, I'm... Yeah, I'm going to start filling up C now. So let's C1. Okay. Enter. Yes. Do you really want to write this patch? Patch write. Yes. Writing completed. So now you just wrote this patch. That's nice. So, what's this then? The effect. Let's take a listen. Uh, we've got a bunch of different effects. Overdrive, distortion, metal, fuzz, crusher, phaser. Let's take them all uh, and see what it sounds like. So, each of them has tone and depth. Depth is how much of the effects we want to apply. Sometimes it's making it so loud uh, so we need to kind of parry that by lowering the level somewhere. And just by, by playing one sound, in fact, if we if we make this in mono mode, so it's just going to be one sound. Uh, we can clearly hear the quality of the of the tone there. However, if we're playing this in polyphonic mode, we can hear the, the typical um, uh, interference or f fuzz that happens when you play polyphony through, uh, through an overdrive. You can hear this kind of artifact. I'm not sure what it's called, actually. <laughs> So if there is a sound, you're building a sound that you want to be polyphon polyphonic, uh, try to be really careful about where you set the levels of the, of the effect, if it's an overdrive effect or a distor distortion kind of effect.
because it immediately it could get really messy and that is uh, also influencing the way you'd like to play with that patch so if you set it to be really distorted it's not uh, going to be a type of instrument which you play a chord if you want to play a chord or some um, you might consider uh, dialing down this uh, a, a little bit. In fact, let's try the different the different distortions here. So that was overdrive. Uh, distortion sounds like this. I think that one, the, the distortion might be more suitable for, for uh, chords and stuff. It's also really interesting to hear what it sounds like with very round kind of sounds. I think it does a, a really nice job with this. That. Yeah, this one is called Metal. I'd say that these are really good. This is this is a really good distortion. Um, actually, when I was trying this out for the first time and I came to this distortion, I was like, "Whoa! This is this is actually much better than a lot of distortions you typically find out on synths." This is really mean. <laughs> okay, so the next one is called Fuzz. <laughs> But uh, 
I think it, it, it works really best uh, when it's monophonic, when it's polyphonic, it's kind of, it's a bit all over the place. But that, that being said, I think it sounds genuinely, genuinely good. too shabby so the next one crusher is a bit crushing engine let's dial it down to zero mm, yeah like this so if we just want a tad of uh, digital texture in there. Uh, we can use this, just subtly have a high frequency like that, high tone, and just. To just give it a slight hint of uh, digital, uh, old school f flavor, kind of. Since this is not following the frequencies or anything, it, it's a master effect. Uh, if you play polyphony, uh, it's a heavy effect. It's very uh, easy to reveal that it's actually in a master effect and it's not part of the of the per voice uh, engine. But it could still be a cool effect. I typically use it very like subtly, like. Something like that. Yeah, and the last one, phaser. Yeah, so there you go. I, th I think we've covered a lot of stuff here. Yeah, let's save this patch. Okay, another thing I want to show you now is there's something called performance. Performance is typically a combination of two patches. And one patch could be on the left and one could be on the right, or they could be at the same time layering each other. And I want to show you uh, from a de sound designer's point of view, when you're designing a patch, and you still feel like you're a bit limited, uh, you could sort of divide it up into two layers instead. So one layer could have its, to its own rules. For instance, if, if one layer is... If that is one layer, maybe we want a second layer that is a sort of key-off effect. So we could start to to make that key off sound right now. Perhaps I want a kind of thud when I lift the keys, like um, Yeah, let's try to do that. So I'd, I'd, let's base it on this patch. Let's see how do we achieve that. Maybe we should reverse the filter and have the envelope of the filter.
So now we, we kind of change the sound and we have a thud in the beginning and then a sort of a, a delightful key off. And maybe we could even throw a reverb on it. Okay, let's maybe shave off a bit of the low frequency here. In order to avoid too much of a thud uh, in the beginning. Okay, let's save this. I'm gonna save this on C3, I think. Uh, right. Patch, Megan, I'm gonna call it off. Megan off and enter. Okay, save that, enter, yes. <clears throat> Okay, let's try it. Okay, so let's head over to performance now. Same thing there, shift and performance is gonna create a, a totally empty uh, performance. So let's do that. Enter and complete it. Now this is like a preset one, so it probably just pick the first two patches in the memory. Let's see. A performance is made out of two patches. Uh, and in this case, it's called part part, lower part and upper part. I could turn them on and off. They're both off now, so can't play them. But they were still being played in the background there. So, as a matter of fact, this is the first time we're actually gonna go into the menu um, to, to load the different parts onto the different, uh, the lower and the upper layer. So let's go to menu. Let's see, perform edit, part edit, yeah. So we can see here, uh, this is the lower and this is the upper panel or part. So the lower one is currently A2 and the upper one is A1. We want to select, um, which was it again? C1 was Megan, right? And the lower one, yeah, and the upper one we want to select C3, right? And now we're gonna play them together. Hmm. Maybe I could even go in here, upper part and... I think it's a bit too full release sound. The lower part, I think, I want this. part I think I'm gonna change this to uh, Too much reverb on the, the upper part. Maybe I'm gonna use the room instead. So if I press right now, when I'm editing a sound and these are green, does that mean that I'm saving the patch or the performance? Let's see, right. It says right performers and these immediately turn yellow. And 
I'm wondering if a performance is saving the patches within the performance or if it's just referencing uh, the synth to load the, the patches. Let's find out. So I'm going to save this now. A1. Okay, right performance. Yep. Enter. I'm going to give it a name. Megan's keys. Enter. Fat split. Yeah. I'm going to replace that. And yes, write it. So right now, I'm really curious about whether or not it saved the changes that I made. So I'm going to load it again. It didn't save that, right? So now we know that by saving, by writing a performance, it only saves uh, the performance settings and it's just referencing uh, the different patches. But if we do this, you can see, oh, we can actually save the lower patch or the upper patch. So if we make adjustments like we just did, uh, let's see, upper. Okay, and then the lower. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this. Uh, then I'm gonna go into write again. And then instead of performance, I'm gonna say the lower patch, enter, Megan, Megan. And it's automatically selecting where it was previously saved. And I'm gonna save it again, enter, yes. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, right, with the upper patch. And it says a little star there, you notice. That means that I've, I've changed this and it's recognizing that. So let's enter and uh, Megan off, enter. And uh, it's automatically setting, uh, selecting the same slot again where it was originally placed. So I'm gonna enter it again, yes. So now, Since it's playing two layers at once, it's affecting the, the total number of polyphonic notes that I can play at the same time. Uh, I haven't even bothered to count, uh, but since it's called System 8, maybe it's 8, I'm not sure. Let's play 4. Yeah, it seems like maybe it's the, the maximum number of polyphony might be eight. It seems like that now. So now when I'm using two layers, it, it's uh, four in one layer and four in the other layer, it seems. So four now, system four. Yeah. And one thing that, that I forgot to mention, I think I'm gonna show you now in the last is Everything here has an LED behind it. Usually when you see the synthesizer, all of the LEDs are lit. So it's all green. I found that to be a little bit too much LED information shining in my face. So I turn it off and it's in the menu. So just go in the menu, you go in the system, enter. There's LCD contrast there. The next is knob LED on. So you can see, uh, the reason why they've got so many LEDs in there is they're going to tell you something. They're not going to tell you the value of the knobs. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything like that. What it, what it does tell you is that if you go to another plug-out synth, they show you what knobs are available in that synth. So this one is Jupiter. So it doesn't have this sub-oscillator and, and some of these are... are just not in it. Plug out two. It's um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure what it is, but uh, it's it's got even less parameters available. Uh, but in case of the system eight, everything is available. So I don't need the LEDs to tell me that. Uh, so I just go in there, menu, 
system and nobility off. I found it to be uh, more pleasing uh, to my eyes. And uh, yeah, just want to tell you, I kind of forgot. Cool. This is the system eight by Roland. I think, um, I hope that you've got a fair overview. I know I've been all over the place, but I, I hope you got a, a good overview of how to create sound and what you could do. Of course, uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately, it's, it's about your tastes and the way you want to create sounds. And this is a platform. But I think it really shines when you, you get to know where everything is and you can do it really fast with no menu diving whatsoever. In fact, the only time we really needed to go into the menu was when we wanted to make sure that the, the performance was set up in the way we wanted. So I think that's really neat. And yeah, if you enjoy what I'm doing here on YouTube, like this mega tutorials and, uh, and the reports from, uh, from Superbooth and other events like electronic music synth centric event, uh, please consider throwing in some donations if you want to. I'm gonna, uh, I'm available over at Patreon, which is a crowdfunding platform for in subscription form. A lot of people uh, support me over there and I'm so thankful for that. You know, that's the reason why I can keep doing this and keep adding value to the videos. Um, and if you're not up to this monthly donation thing, you might want to go to my web store where I've got lots of patches and sample packs. And uh, yeah, uh, it's a, also a very nice way to support my work. And for this particular synth, you've heard some of the patches uh, in the beginning of this video. Uh, I'm gonna just create, what is it? I think 16, uh, 24 more patches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and release a complete pack with system eight patches. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel and then uh, hit the notification bell <laughs> because then you know when I'm gonna release it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. And yeah, cool. Happy you stayed with me for this time. I'm gonna play some patches and uh, while you, and yeah, take a zip of my tea. Peace out. Thank you.